morning. We're on a river linkage this morning. Um, usually we're looking for fish, but this morning we're looking for signal crayfish. So what we're here to do is to get a sample of signals and we're going to get them analysed to look at the build-up of um, pollutants in them. So they're quite good signals are for things like this because they're quite omnivorous and they'll eat anything really. They'll eat um, vegetation, invertebrates, they'll eat fish. So yeah, anything that's coming down the river in terms of pesticide or toxins or anything like that, over time at low levels, um, you can trace quite well in signal tissue, um, signal kind of signal tissue. So that's the plan. We're going to try and catch about 15 or so, and then we're going to get sent off to the lab to analyse them. So um, uh, yeah, we'll do some hand searches and um, uh, see what we can find. But this is quite an interesting sight. This is because there's a couple of things you'll notice, and I'll just put the the camera underneath the water now and illustrate that. Hopefully you can see just then that there's a, um, uh, always a trace of sediment in this particular river. It's always quite silty and quite turbid. And um, uh, that is being caused by signal crayfish. And what I'll do now, I'll just explain in a few minutes um, some of the work we've done on signals, looking at how they impact not just the ecology, so not just the fish and the invertebrates and the macrophyte growth, so the fish there, but also how they can create and mobilise sediment and what they can do to banks. So I hope it'll be interesting and hopefully we'll catch a few and we'll show you some in a minute. In terms of some of the work we've done on signal crayfish in the past 10 years or so around Lincolnshire and Northamptonshire, we've done numerous different studies every now and again when we get the chance. Um, so first of all, we've got quite a good idea of what impact they have on fish and invertebrates. So obviously fish eggs is a big one. When fish egg and um, fish lay their eggs on, on macrophytes and underwater weed, then yeah, that's a big food source of signals that is. They, uh, they find them in, in kind of spring and summertime and eat them. And also, they'll eat um, eggs and gravels as well. If the time of year is right and they're out and about, and it's not too cold when they're laid, yeah, the signals will quite happily find eggs that are laid in gravel. So they can have a big impact on not just the recruitment in terms of eggs, but also the habitat as well. So I've seen quite a few times signals chasing off bull, bull heads and um, uh, yeah, small species as well. And just that impact of them being there, being quite aggressive in their kind of territorial space, can have a big impact on the numbers of fish in the um, uh, smaller kind of tributaries that we see. So we know the impact of fish and a lot of the invertebrate data as well. We've got some good data looking at how invertebrate communities will shift when signal crayfish come in. So what you'll start to see is you'll see that all the, the kind of slow things, slow invertebrates that can't move very fast, start to disappear. So snails, for instance, underwater snails, um, yeah, they'll, they'll go from a, a section because the signals can catch them quite easily. So they can shift both fish communities and invertebrate communities and also because of the way they move around and um, uh, the, way, the way they feed, they can have quite big impacts on macrophytes. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. So yeah, over the years we've done a lot of work. I've done some work with Loughborough University as well. And um, uh, this is some of the findings from that, just to give you a bit of background to the sediment. So one thing we wanted to do is, was work out what they can do to the turbidity of the river. So how, how muddy is it when you get lots and lots of signal crayfish in a particular section? And some of the sections we have can be really infested. So what we did was start to look at underwater things, what was going on. And this is a bit of footage from Matt Johnson and Steve Rice at Loughborough University. So all credit go to them for this. And what they did was they took some sediment from a particular river in our area. They let it settle out in a tank. And then they started doing some underwater videoing of what crayfish would do when they walked around and their general behavior. And this is what you see. So you can see they're quite, um, uh, quite active when they're underwater. They can move quite fast. And also because they've got so many legs, when the legs make contact with that fine sediment, it keeps them suspending it. So we've got a good idea that when they do walk along, we know that they can create fine sediment just from walking. But what about when they fight? So next thing was, yeah, same thing. They put some sediment in a tank from the river, let it settle out, put two crayfish in and see what happened. And in the back there, you can see there's this grating in the corner, the turbidity meter. That's measuring how muddy the water is when the crayfish are in there. And you can see they're quite um, evolved to fight. You can see they're all kind of front end power, big claws, and they're kind of, yeah, they've evolved to be able to push forwards like that. So they're obviously quite used to fighting like this. It's not a, it's not because they've put it in, we've put them in a tank that they're doing it. It's because of them, uh, the way they've developed. And yeah, the first thing you can notice from that is the turbidity instantly increases, very muddy. And so what I wanted to do was see if this was going on in our rivers. And the next slide, again, this is from um, Steve Rice. And that, what that just illustrates is the turbidity in a tank before and after you put a crayfish in. So again, just the first kind of hour or so there, with no crayfish in, the bit is very low. As soon as you put a crayfish in by itself, just walking around, you know, just its general activity, and the turbidity comes up and stays up as well. 
So we got a good idea from tank experiments that crayfish were causing sediment, but what was going on the outside in the river? So again, we took an opportunity to do some work with um, Steve Rice at Liverpool University and Matt, and what we did was we looked at a particular section of the river with lots of crayfish in. So the first thing to start on in this slide is down here, this left-hand corner. So you see a signal there, it's got a little tag on its back, and that's called a PIT tag. And that stands for Passive Integrated Transponder Tag. What that does, when that goes over to something, um, that's kind of related to the pit tag, it will induce a signal and it'll be recorded. And these something that was going over were these antennae. So they look like big dinner plates, we put a series of them in the bed, then tagged a lot of crayfish over a series of time around this area and let the crayfish go. And then every time a crayfish went from um, plate to plate, they got picked up. And what we started to see was at the same time as crayfish activity was high, which is these green ticks on this graph, some uh, all pretty much nocturnal activity pretty much so yeah all these green ticks come in the middle of the night when it's dark when they're out and about this red line which is turbidity so how muddy the water is that was also peaking as well and it goes up and down during daylight and night time so we looked at all the abstractions and discharges at a particular location and they weren't causing this trend it was this activity from crayfish so yeah we've got a good, real good link with what was going on underwater but we want to actually see some some examples as well so Next thing we did was, and um, because it's quite muddy, we couldn't use a standard camera for stuff like this. So we got our, our fish sonar, which is on the left hand side here. And this is a few years back now. I camped out for a couple of nights on this particular river and I uh, just surveyed this section to see what was going on. So that's the sonar in the water, just there, but quite a small brook this is. And you can see how muddy it is. So what that does, that makes sound waves, it gives out sound waves and makes images. So on the right hand side here, we've got um, what's called a bird's eye view of the bed. And this is what we do when we roll the camera on its side. We can effectively look at things in 3D. And I'll give you some examples of the kind of data produced now. So this is the first graph. So that line just there is kind of the space between the bank, which is this bit here, of all the, all the crayfish burrows in. You can see their burrows and the bed. And I'll press play and just illustrate what happens. So yeah, here's the signals moving around. You can see it quite easily. This is footage just speeded up a bit just to uh, yeah, make, make it watchable in this video. But you can see how mobile or active they are. And a lot of the time, see, they've got fighting each other. A lot of the time, they're in and around the burrows. So what we start to do was look at the data to see how long they're spending in burrows, how long they're spending fighting, and what was going on. This is a good example of, of them fighting. So lots of burrows here, lots of activity, crayfish in and out of here. Then in a minute, there's a fight going on just there. You see a crayfish, I think the first one comes in here, tries to clear this burrow out just there, and that one gets fought off. And then this one comes in, fight going on just there makes its way up the bank again clearing out burrows as it goes and all this activity all the time all this fighting and walking was helping to spend that sediment you saw in the tank so that was the, re the reason this, this river we look at is, is quite turbid this is an example of rolling the gear on its side now i want to keep your eye on this bit of burrow just here when i press play and what you'll see there is inside that is a big signal burrowing away working its burrow the little one tries to come in and look what happens it sticks his claw out and just pushes him out just there it says no you don't off you go Again, yeah, a lot we get got a bit of an insight into their, their world and their activity, and all this was helping to demonstrate how much sediment they can generate. So what we did was analyze that bit of sonar data, and that was only a two-meter section of bank, and we looked at total crayfish movements in and around the burrows, in and around the beds, and also the number of fights. So in 32 hours worth of footage, there was over 240 fights in that section of um, river, which is two meters long. So when you consider the footage you saw from the tank, you know. That this cumulative impact over a catchment, and when you've got lots and lots of these things um, spread out down the river, it's having a real big impact. So yeah, so they, we know they, they generate sediment from their, their walking, their fighting, and also from their burrowing. So obviously they dig into banks to create burrows to keep themselves safe. When they um, dig in, they push that silt out into the riverbed, and uh, yeah, create these big holes. And it's not just the effect of burrowing, but it's also the weakening the banks as well. So when you get a lot of these banks that are honeycombed with these burrows, in high flows during winter, then they're much more likely to, to collapse and be pushed into the river. So you've got that double whammy really. You've got the, their ability to mobilize sediment and also generate it as well from their burrowing. And you start to see parts of banks like this that are completely undercut and signals are quite responsible for this. And we see this a lot in a lot of our rivers when they get really well established. They really well dig into burrowing the banks, especially when there's not much habitat in rivers. Um, when they're quite kind of barren, then yeah, that's when they take the opportunity to do that. So yeah, we've got a good idea and background uh, about what signals we're doing, and now I'll just go back to the, um, uh, the catching of them and demonstrate us trying to get a few. Yeah. 
Victory! They're yeah, quite very aggressive like that. They um, uh, instantly rear up, and yeah, big claws sticking out. Yeah, they um, uh, one up for There's one, one in the tub. This is classic signal habitat. And Terminator's going to go now. Go, Terminator, go. We keep clears all and. That's the survey over. We've got enough now to send them to the lab. Um, so this is a standard signal crayfish. Uh, this is a male, this is. You can see it's got claspers underneath its um, tail just there. Um, yeah, big thing to distinguish them really is if you look in the claws, there's that what we call a signal just there. So that kind of whitey blue mark. And also on top of the carapace, on the washroom there, it goes to a very distinct point. I hope you can see that. What they are is very aggressive. So you can see, um, this one's trying to get the camera. Um, what happens is they over, pretty much overpower um, our native species. So they grow much bigger, much stronger, they're faster, um, the claws are much stronger. And yeah, they, they, can, they can pretty much push them out and dominate them. And they also carry what's called the crayfish plague. Um, this one hasn't got it, but yeah, they carry a disease. So all the equipment we used today will be disinfected and dried out. So don't spread that around. So yeah, this is a standard signal really, and they're getting more and more widespread. They're pretty much in most of our rivers now. So yeah, difficult to stop. And hopefully from the, the footage we showed you earlier on, the kind of damage they do is, um, uh, is quite serious really. So yeah, that's, that's that, that done. We'll send them off to the lab, get results back and help us build a picture of what's going on in our rivers in terms of um, heavy metals, yeah, pollutants and to toxins and stuff like that. So um, uh, yeah, it's quite a simple little survey for quite good results.